Welcome to the realms of Arcania, everyone. This is a remake of an old game I used to play in the 90s. And as you can see, I have the option to continue game. This is uh, hardly my first attempt to play this or make a Let's Play series about this. Um, I actually did that and I sucked. Um, because Not because I was so bad at the game. Um, it is different than it was in the 90s, but um, the sound was really bad and so I decided to, to try a different technique to record the sound. And yeah, now let's just uh, get into the game. Uh, I will pray, uh, play on professional difficulty. The difference between those two uh, is actually in the beginner difficulty you don't have to care about the skills of your character, the computer takes care of everything and in professional it's just you have control on all the skills okay it's the dark eye realms of arcania the dark eye is actually a german pen and paper role-playing game the most successful um, over the last i don't think don't know 20 years or something uh, i still run games on this and there have been a couple of games over the years. In the 19th there was a trilogy and this game is the remake of the first part of this trilogy and then there have been a lot of unsuccessful attempts to make new games until I don't know there was some some game 2009 or 10 I have to look it up maybe I put it in the in the notes here um, that actually uh, was pretty successful and had a successor or a sequel um, and then there have been some uh, adventure games uh, these two are, are pretty good I'm not sure if I can make let's play videos of this but uh, of these but they are really good so it's uh, the chains of Satinav and memoria both available on Steam this game, however, is no longer available on Steam. Uh, you will see this in the comments. There have been some legal issues. Um, I don't want to get into details here. Okay, let's um, let's check. Uh, we don't we don't uh, use this party. Actually, um, I will I will see if I can find the characters I made for the party and then dive directly into the game. Okay. Welcome to Thorval. Thorval is a Scandinavian themed area in the realms of Arcania. It's in the, our, what is it, northwest? Northwest, yeah. And um, there are a lot of sailors and pirates, stuff like that. Um, they're pretty bad badass. And yes. When in doubt, press F1. I thought I should press F5, which is a quick save. Okay, um, let's just... We're in a temple of Travia. Travia is uh, the goddess of... of the... yeah... of marriage and uh, hearth fire. Uh, she's a nice goddess. So, let's see... Oh, there's the character generator. Manage the groups. I will... T I would see... Yeah, these are the characters I made. Kaya, Abash, Cherin, Torfin, Vindariel. So these are the guys I created for, for my first attempt of the game. And I'm actually uh, going to, to get them into the game. So let's just remove these guys from the group. Um, bum, bum. That will take some time. It's so classic. Um, maybe I will create a short video about the character creation, but we will see a lot of the character creation um, or character management when we're in the game. So, uh, first character is Cherine. She is a badass warrior, um, not from Thorval. She is uh, more like. Uh, uh, yeah, from from the Middle Lands, something like that. And then we have 
Um, no, now they are all in the selection. Well, uh, we got Torfin. Torfin is a is a Thorvalian, so he's pretty badass as well. Um, then we got Arbash. He's a dwarf. Um, Torfin and Arbash will share the duties of the questionable tasks. So I will bring uh, Torfin a bit into cheating and uh, playing cards, stuff like that. Whereas Abash will be my, yeah, you know, locksmith. Let's put it this way. Okay. Um, then we have an elf, an elfin lady. Vindariel Foxtalker. She will be our archer and she's also capable of doing some nice magic. And I got two full-time magicians with me. Uh, one is Alric. He is a battle mage. And I also got... I think it's, it's Kaya. Yeah, Kaya is... Um, She's responsible for domination magic, stuff like that. And both of them will be capable of doing normal tasks in magic, like uh, throwing small attack spells, whereas uh, he, of course, will be uh, able to kick a bit more ass. Okay. Now I got this little plus, and that means that these guys will level up to the first level. That's a pretty nice thing in uh, the Dark Eye. That you actually raise your character to the first level. Um, this is a, has been the same in the old editions of, um, of the Dark Eye. So we're in the fourth edition right now and working on the fifth just like uh, Dungeons and Dragons comes out with all kinds of new additions once in a while. So I think it's like every 10 years or something. Whatever. Um, leveling up your characters to a first level gives them some kind of individual, individual touch. So let's just go into this and we have this level up button. Let's do it. So Cherine will be our uh, no, I don't want to do this. Um, this is not good. So you can actually uh, get d6, so a six-sided dice amount of points, of vitality points in the beginning. And I only got two. That's below average and I'm not happy, but I have to deal with that. Um, I will try to raise her strength. Strength is uh, very important if you try to tear down doors or uh, deal more damage in combat, stuff like that. So I'm going for strength and agility and courage with her. That's her main attributes. So let's see. Okay, strength will now be 14. I think the max is 21 or has been 21 in the third edition and the fourth of the pen and paper. It's actually higher, whatever you can afford to buy. So this is different. Okay, um, I can also try to um, improve a negative attribute. Actually, I want to lower one and I want to lower this one. This one? No, I want to lower this one. Failure. In the background, it's um, it's a set of three dice rolls, and if one is successful, meaning I, in in, in terms of lowering an attribute, um, hitting the same or below value with a d20, a 20-sided dice, then I actually am successful. So it was not good. All right, uh, now I can improve some talents. And we're doing this. First of all, we're going to... Oh, okay. Where am I? Combat. Oh, here I can 
I can work on my com. Yeah, that's that's uh, a bit different. So I want to get better with a sword. I can only raise one talent by one point for combat talents, and I want to raise two-handed weapons. And I also want to raise unarmed in case she loses her weapon in the fight. Uh, as we can see, she's got a leather leather armor that's kind of okay-ish. Okay, let's um, see for the rest of the talent. I will see her having some treat wounds. And you see I only have 14 tries. Um, this can also fail if uh, in the background there is a two... There are two six-sided dice being being rolled for raising it, and I need to get higher than the current value. And if I'm not successful, well, then one of the one of the points from the tries is uh, is gone. Oh, and I just see if I go and hover a talent, the affected attributes are highlighted on the right side here. It's pretty nice. So, um, Warcraft is courage, cleverness, and charisma. Ah, that's pretty good. Well, let's just raise this as well. And we also want to go for swimming, which is if you are in Thorval and you travel a lot by ship in this uh, in this game, uh, pretty important. Yeah, pretty important uh, talent. Willpower is also important. Climbing can be. And instinct and perception is very important. I don't need the nature talents on her. Uh, maybe survival a bit. Um, I got two left, right? Um, let's use sneak. Okay, so we're done with her. As we can see, let's do the same with our Torfin. And no, we're not going to do this. Oh, that's good. Six points means six vitality. That's pretty awesome. I will raise courage for him. And I will try to lower this one. Was not successful. Choose talent. So as I said, he will try to, or he will go into uh, some kind of cheating. So I will raise this. I will also raise his uh, axe skill and unarmed because weapons can always get lost or broken during combat. Okay, let's go for the talents again. Swimming as a Thorvalian, he already got swimming pretty high and yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna raise this to 10 for him. At least someone will survive that. I will raise these two, that's pretty important as well. Um, willpower, very important. And uh, let's go for these. What else? Seducing. This is, um, <laughs> I'm just fooling around. We had one Thorvalian in my first pen and paper group and he had a maxed out seducing skill just for fun. And so I'm, I'm paying tribute to this uh, doing this here. Okay, I got some more left. Body control is pretty important. Climbing and sneaking. So he's very focused on the body talents. All right, uh, what, what else? Um, the dwarf, level him up and not... Oh, that's awesome. 45 hit points is pretty good for a first for first level character. And I also got my strength to 14 and I will lower this. No, okay. Um, dwarfs also are proficient with axes and also do unarmed. As you might have seen, I'm, I'm going for pretty much attack here. Um, I will raise the parry skills as well, but I wanna get the fights over at some point and this is the reason why I'm uh, using attack right now. Okay, uh, he will be our locksmith and he will also need swimming. Dwarves are not very good at swimming so minus three is 
pretty pretty bad so let's uh, sneak him a bit use these two give him a bit survival and dwarves are good in history what else uh, climbing climbing is good um, I actually don't know I've got one left let's let's use hide here okay this one is also done. Now we go for the elven character and elves are special because they can do magic as well as uh, the magicians can and so I can choose. I, I um, get a 1d6 plus 2 and can distribute those points to vitality and astral energy and I got 7 so I will Yeah, I will try. I will try this. So she will be in the back using uh, her her bow, and so she doesn't need these many points in the beginning. Um, I will raise her agility. That was successful, and this as well. And finally, for one character, I was able to lower this. Okay, um, I can distribute the skill improvement points I got 35 and can put them into skills and spells uh, I will actually do it this way so I can distribute like 10 and I will put a lot in skills in the beginning uh, later it will might be different but she is our um, our wilderness guy, she will do all the hunting, she will do scouting, and so I need some skills here and also in fighting. Okay, let's see. First of all, we need combat projectile weapons. She needs to have these, and um, sh she also will be able to fight with, with a sword, and in case a weapon gets lost, unarmed. And. Um, then we get into talents. I need her to be able to track. And some here. Orientation. I don't need this. Uh, binding. But I need her to have these. And you see, I'm already down to six. Um, but she needs to swim. And she needs to have this. And she needs to sneak. And we're done here. Now I have some spells left. You might not be familiar with these spells, but uh, you will be um, when I'm playing along. So there are some spells that I use a lot, like the Fulminictus, which is an attack spell. Oh, we got a small description here. Cause direct damage. And the nice thing about this is that it ignores every armor. Very nice. And this one as well. Um, the lightning is temporary blinding spell. And I want to have this one, uh, which accelerates my character a lot, a lot. That uh, is modifying his attributes and combat. I need the healing spell as well. So we're good here. I will use Eye of the Eagle as well, sometimes. And... I'm not sure if I can use it, but I will raise it. This is a uh, bridge of light. This is pretty nice. Uh, all my elven characters in the last 20 years had this one. And I will also get this one, which increases my bow skill in combat. Okay, let's go for the first mage. He is a combat mage. We will not do this automatically. And he doesn't need a lot of hit points, so we go for Astral Energy all the way. And raise Cleverness. Lower Claustrophobia. It doesn't work. Um, do you wish to transform 12, 10 spell increases um, into 3 to 8 more Astral Energy? Hell yeah! Uh, astral Energy is the win factor in a lot of combats in these games. And um, seven more points in the beginning, like 39 astral energy is is a lot, it's huge, and I'm really happy to have this. 
Uh, so... No, I think I think that's good. 15 is necessary. Uh, let's do these. Let's uh, put him on alchemy. That's pretty awesome. And arcane lore. And also he will get spears, which is his uh, stuff. His wizard stuff. Yeah, talent spears. I need this. Uh, I should have put it on uh, defense anyway, but it doesn't matter. And I got five left, so I'm going for swimming. And I am also going for treat poison. So I will make him poison. And um, Kaya will be treat disease. Ho I, hope, I hope that works out. I have no idea. And uh, he will also go for... I got the Dwarf on History. I will give him Religious Lore as well. Let's see for the spells. So we will focus on combat mainly. That means I can raise spells by three points. Or by one point more than normally. Some points or some spells are not... Um, Magician spells, so um, they could all normally only be raised by one point, so now I could uh, raise them by, by two, or if it's a magician spell, by three points, and that's what I'm going to do. This one as well, this is a fire, fire spear or something like that. This is um, slowing the enemy down. This is a pretty important thing that can damage the weapons on the target. And I'm going for this. I also need... I also need... Where is it? This one. Uh, that gives me armor on a mage. And I got 13 left. That's good. I will uh, go for counter domination. I will go for the Foramen, which is an opening spell in case my lockpicks break. I got 9 left. Um, I will go for the Analytic spell. And I will go for... Can I... I think I was able to whatever to to summon demons obviously I cannot so I don't need this one and she will be domination so I will go for healing um, curing and I never tried this one let's try this one so I raised all my combat spells now for Kaya she will Oh, I only gained three points, but anyway, they will go all the way to the Astral Energy, and I will raise Charisma on her, because Charisma is pretty important for a Domination Mage. Um, also, Claustrophobia did not work, and yes, I got six more. This is okay. Um, swimming. And also willpower. Let's see. Um, arcane lore. Languages. She doesn't need this one. But she needs this. And I'm done here. Let's see for the spells. Domination. Horiphobos. Making the guy fear you. Somnigravis is making him sleep. I don't know how this works. Um, summon a skeleton. Let's, let's just raise this a bit. Respond army. Must tell truth. Uh, I, don't, I don't see this uh, being useful in the game. Be my friend is actually useful. Um, I will have her... 
doing this. I'm actually missing some spells here. Like there, there used to be a teleport spell, and I think they completely got rid of it. Um, I will raise some combat spells like the lightning, um, the fulminictus, and actually the ignifaxius, which are basic attack spells, and I just need them. I like the paralyze, but it's pretty heavy, so it's minus three plus the magic resistance of uh, the target. So that's uh, that's a lot. And not not very not very easy. Attributes is reading attributes, right? Get information. Um, she will also get the spell, and of course, domination means un anti domination and banish spirits. I think I will need the spell later in the game. Okay, um, now everyone is uh, like prepared. Let's hit the adventure, I would say. Um, as for the story, uh, Thorval is under attack. Uh, we will hear about this later in the game. So the entire region is in danger by who else but the orcs. So the orcs are marching towards Thorval and they are... Uh, they're massive. There are a lot of orcs and uh, we will fight a lot of orcs, I think. I think. Um, but this uh, particular game is not about, you know, um, slaying all the orcs and having huge battles. It's about avoiding battles. So uh, we will fight, but we will not fight the main army of the orcs uh, because uh, we are repeating uh, history of the realms of Arcania and then the history of the re uh, in the realms of Arcania. Uh, the orcs actually did not attack Thorval, and we will find out why. And uh, I, d I don't spoil you too, will not spoil you too much. So let's get just out of the temple of uh, Travia and right into Thorval. Um, as we can see, there's a small market over there, and um, there's a bridge over some river. There's an inn. And we got some... Uh, I think, yeah, this is the weaponsmith. There we could actually buy stuff. But having a look at our money, it's 9, it's 13, it's uh, f 17, 22, 26. So it's 26 ducats, and that's not much. Let's uh, get into an inn and try to get some money. I used to do this a lot in the old game. Um, I will just demonstrate it here, and we're, we will pretty much uh, go unprepared and, and just see what, what will happen. So, um, play instruments. Uh, we got an elf, so Vindariel will play the instrument. And no one is actually caring about this. So we can also cheat. Torfin has some cheat ability. A Thorwallian, wearing a war coat ah. and bearing a heavy axe and a bugle, enters the tap room. Harken, harken, harken. The Hetman Tronda Torbenson seeks heroes who are able and willing to go on a dangerous quest that may well cost them their lives, but may also give them eternal glory and good gold. Skills of the sword and magic are needed to complete this quest. If you believe that you have both the skills and the courage, go to the Hetman in Thorwall by the shortest route. Okay, that was what I was actually waiting for. Um, the Thorvalians uh, are seeking heroes to do a quest for them and we also get thrown out of the inn. Um, the, the headman is, is living up there and we're getting right to it. Um, there is a small triangle, a pink triangle on the minimap in the upper left corner that directs you to, uh, to the quests. Let's just get in here. Um, I think that's an outhouse or something. Um, the entire 
setup like this 3D world is nice. The character art is of course, I mean this is uh, uh, compared to games like Skyrim or other big role-playing games, this is low budget. This has been done by a small company, um, but uh, it's actually nice and... The Hetman's otter skin rises high above the city, home not only to Hetman Tronda's residence, but also to a garrison and the famed map library. Outside the heavy gates in the embankment are two giants with fearsome axes, obviously warriors of the Het Guard. Where are you going? We are the heroes the Hetman is looking for, of course. True. I admire your self-confidence. Well, come along then. One of the guards lead you into the large storage, where Hetman Tronda is brooding over old maps by the light of several candles. After you have politely introduced yourself, we do not need these niceties. So you think you are able to survive the wilderness for months on end, to find something where you don't even know what it is? Indeed, that's what I call courage. Right to business. Thorwall is in grave peril. Orcs are gathering in the upper Bodir Valley, and it looks like they have united behind one leader now. That's uh, kind of what I said before, and um, yes, Thor uh, Thorwall is in peril. The voiceover is done by one or, I, I don't know, maybe a couple of guys, not too many, um, so yeah. We will get used to it, right? Uh, since we want to play through a great game. Uh, it looks like the story is similar as in the the old one from the 1990s. Uh, so, if the auguries yeah. are accurate, then they will number in the thousands this time. We must prevent the orcs from reaching Vilnhoma, else war will be inevitable. I have studied the ancient sagas and realized that the best thing we can do is impress the orcs, and preferably their chieftain, so much that they abandon their plans. Magic would actually be best suited to the task, but you know what it's like. Spellcasters are either incompetent or on the wrong side, so we need a different method. Not that I have two spellcasters, actually three spellcasters in my team and they will probably be pretty offended by what he said um, anyway there was a weapon lost in Orkland dozens of years ago Grimring the sword of the famous Hetman Higelik whose expedition never returned his grave must be somewhere in Orkland and his sword is probably there as well they say the orcs were in terror of the weapon then, and their shamans, or whatever they're called, supposedly have a long memory. If we could get our hands on this weapon, and a brave warrior could teach the orcs a lesson with it, we would have won half the battle. They'll either scatter, or else their morale will be weakened to the point that we easily force them to retreat. Well, now that you know what this is about, do you still think you have the courage to go on this quest? The courage? Hell yeah. The money to get the equipment? No. So I'm not choosing, choosing this option, I would choose this option, because uh, he will give me some starting money then. I can give you a letter granting you equipment from the armory, and you will be richly rewarded on your return, of course. One piece of advice. As far as I know, a direct descendant of Hegelik, one Isleif Olgardson, lives in Stonrock. Why don't you try your luck there? Yes, we will do this, but we will do another quest before. Um, so this will be given to... May Swarin. Swafnir is the god of the Thorvalians. He's supposed to be the son of Effort, who is actually the god of the sea. Um, I can go to the armory. Let's see. Oh, that's right there. 
And here we have the first bug. Oh, You saw this? When I hover over something and leave the minimap, it doesn't go away until I go back there. Oh. Anyway. Let's run a bit. And here we got the armory. What do you want here in the armory? An old one-legged man asks you as he writes lists at a desk. Do you have a letter from the Hetman or Jadra? He goes on without looking up. Uh, yes, we do. Oh, that has not happened for years. Are we at war? Yes, we well, are. Not my business. I will not be drafted anymore anyway. Come on, I'll show you the weapons you can have. Pick what you need. Everything up to ducats is free. Yeah, that's kind of poor, right? I mean, mm, ducats. <sighs> they could they could have said 30, right? It's uh, not that bad anyway. Yeah, so that means I have to really choose stuff for 30 because everything else would be would be lost then. So He's not one-legged. Okay, let's see. Okay, we got two, two axe-wielding guys, and that means we will get two of these axes, and that's already twelve ducats. Um, she's got a sword. She's got a bow. These guys have their stuffs, so we don't need any more weapons at this point. But we need some armor. Um, she got a leather armor that can stay. And these th three guys just have a shirt. And that's not okay. So I need... I think this one, right? I don't know why this is more expensive. I got minus one, minus one and armor three. I got armor 3 and minus 1 and minus 2. So this one is actually better. The toad skin. I will get two of these, three of these, if I can. 30. Hmm, magic. Let's just get this stuff. Oh, this is guy. Uh, I, 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 I like this one. Um, this is a kind of a mini game uh, that, you can, that you can do. Um, you can haggle. Uh, I actually don't have anyone who is capable of doing this. Uh, it will depend on how many, you know, uh, skill points I have in the future. Having someone being able to haggle. And you can just slide up here. I usually try max, middle, and then I go for zero. So let's just see. Oh, well. 25? Nope. Okay, so we have to pay the original price. In the second game of the series in the past, um, I don't know how this worked. It was just like, you said you want to haggle and something came out, some percentage. I, I actually like this way better, but let's just uh, go for this. So, Torfin will get one, Abash will get one. Vindaria will get one as well, and I like this screen to distribute the load on the guys. Uh, the old game just gave it to the first person in the party, like the left one and all the way there, so you always had the first one being completely overloaded. And this is way better. Okay, well, let's directly use the stuff. I mean, as a Thorvalian, he got a saber. And a small axe. We will give him a proper one. And we also give him the toad skin. I will sell the remaining stuff. Um, to actually get some money. And... Uh, equipped. Oh, this is nice. I wasn't aware that this is possible. I will equip this and this. And these guys are already there. So let's leave this place. So normally we would travel all the way to... What was it? Rockstone or what he said? But I want to do something else here. 
I just lost track of where I am. Okay, let's see. Um, let's go up here. So, the good thing is I know this game, or I used to know this game, and I played it a lot. So, there is a big quest in uh, Thorval that we can actually go through, and that's the Old Bailey. The Imperial Fortress, called Old Ugdalf by Thorwallians, rises high above the city. It is home to the Thorwallian Warrior Academy, an unimpressive but necessary and useful institution. As you approach the gate, you find your way blocked by two dashing young warriors. Halt! Who goes there? Rondra's blessing upon you. Password! I doubt that Thorvalian warrior schools would use Rondra's blessings since uh, they are pretty much into Swafnir. Uh, but let's just see. I want to go to uh, Master Dramosh and so I will use this Sorry. password. No entry. Orders. Oh, what? The Imperial Fortress, called Old Ugdalf by Thorwallians, rises high above the city. It is home to the Thorwallian Warrior Academy, an unimpressive uh -huh. but necessary and useful institution. Okay, um, I think something is missing here. Uh, I need to have a hint that something is going on. Uh, the question is just where can I get it? Um, what is this? Another temple? And Temple of Tsar is actually my favorite place when one of the party guys is dead you can maybe resurrect him so we will go to the tavern and see if we can get some information or whatever mm. let's just again try to use our instrument see we got eight copper pieces here great and we will no we will actually talk you enter the tavern it is poorly frequented. The innkeeper glances at you, then continues cleaning a number of pitchers, mugs, and carafes with a dirty cloth. You sit down. Cliché. The innkeeper looks at you inquiringly. You're a motley lot. What can I get you? Not so hasty, my friends. How about a beer first? Um... Yes. Shortly afterwards, the beer is on the counter. A good, strong tavern beer, which you compliment the innkeeper on. Thank you, thank you. Old Bulvai helps me to brew it and is well versed in the art of drinking. I would like to help you, but I have a lot to do at this hour. Could you come back later when it's less busy? Then the innkeeper is gone again. Hmm. The patrons at the adjacent table get louder. It seems a bearded sailor with a wooden leg and eye patch as befits the trade is telling the tallest of yarns. That's good. Our ship of the dead, a ghost ship, I tell you, crewed by the undead from its bilges to the yards. I tell you, it's Efford's curse, or Marbo's, perhaps, daughter of Boron, god of the dead. Many years ago, I heard a tale of Marmo and how, in human form, she sailed on a ship that was attacked by a horde of pirates. The ship never arrived at its port of call, and only the ship's cook, a simpleton, was saved. What rubbish. Bartender, three more beers. That's actually good that we heard this. Um, that might trigger the ghost ship event when we travel by ship. Uh, later in the game, uh, since uh, you only get the ghost ship if you heard this story, and the ghost ship is a nice place uh, to get some magical items and a lot of experience. There still isn't much happening here. Only one new patron arrived during the last hour, seating himself at the counter. Do you want to? No, I don't want to get drunk. Well, 
Uh, anyway. The innkeeper appears and looks at you inquiringly. Beer? I've just tapped a fresh barrel. Oh, yes. Soon afterwards, each of you has a full tankard of beer and a small oatmeal cookie. It is drier than a Thorwallian sea biscuit, and you can only eat it if you soak it in the beer first. Great. The innkeeper doesn't pay you any more attention and busies himself with two drunken Thorwallians who are about to start a knife throwing contest. While he's talking them out of it, he sneaks a glance in your direction. He does not return until he has the two drunkards under control. The same again! So, I will now stop at uh, hearing all these uh, descriptions in the in the inn. So, normally, you, it's, it's always like this. If you enter an inn, you have some options to drink or try to talk. So, I will, I will go ahead and, and just click through it since uh, the voiceover is, is taking a lot of time. So let's see. The innkeeper if he... brings the beer you ordered. You want anything else? Yes, you must know a lot of things. Yes. What do you want to know? Well, I know a lot, just as an example. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's of any use to you, of course. Okay, that was the trigger I was needing. Uh, the old Duke Dolph, um, the, the old Bailey. Yes, that well, helps definitely. Well, I'm glad I was able to be of help to you. There still isn't much happening here. Only I one new patron arrives leave. during... You pay for your last beer and leave. On your way out, the innkeeper... Wishes you a good journey home. Okay, um, so it's already already night. Uh, we will still run to the old Bailey and seek to trigger the quest. It's this way. Maybe the they... One moment. After a while, a dwarf <laughs> okay. in his prime I, comes out, clicked, attired anyway. in a flashy chainmail. You don't look like you're here to sign up, he notes laconically. But seeing as you're here... Uh, nice accent, by the way, dude. You can help me with a problem. As you may know, the fortress extends over many miles of tunnels beneath this hill, which also lead to various parts of the city. Well, we only use the upper levels as storage rooms these days. We have walled off the lower levels. Yet, even so, equipment and even weapons keep disappearing from our storage. And one of our recruits recently vanished down there without a trace. I don't have enough people to launch a systematic search of the cellars. So, I was wondering if you would be willing to take on this task. I will do this, of course. 20 ducats up front, 50 if you complete the task, and the right to take anything you find in the cellars. Done. Good. Get yourself properly equipped, then come back. Rondra's blessing upon you. And he's a dwarf, he also wouldn't use Rondra's name. <laughs> So these are the small inaccuracies uh, they just took over from the original game. Um, I don't particularly like this, but what should I do? I mean, just enjoy the game, though. Okay, uh, it's night time, right? So I will not be able to get something in a shop anymore. So we just rent a room, a dormitory. And let's go up to our room. Um, I will do something now. Before we enter the old bailey, the cellars there, uh, I want to get hold of a light source. Uh, the reason for this is it's just dark down there and I could use torches. But I can also try to get uh, a staff enchantment. So I got two wizards and wizards have staffs. And they're used to be four stuff enchantments and the first one is that it makes your stuff unbreakable which is awesome the second one is that you uh, make your stuff to a tro to a torch which is kind of a cliche but anyway the third one turns it into a, a was it what is it a, a rope i think i'm not sure if you can actually use it in the game 
Um, and the fourth one is the most important one. It saves you uh, astral energy on every spell that you cast. And this is uh, pretty important later on in the game. So for now, I'm going to try to uh, get Kaya the, uh, the actual spell. So that's what we're going to do. Use magic, uh, Kaya, and she will do a staff enchantment. And the ritual failed. And as you can see, it costed a lot of spell points. Uh, I will do the same with Alric. Ritual failed. That's not good. <laughs> um, that means I need something different. Uh, down in the in the cellar. Let's just go to sleep now. Um, Eight hours should be enough. What's that? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I don't know what this is. <laughs> what? No, why? <laughs> <laughs> Our Lord Barbarat, what the hell? <laughs> okay, um this is um this is not or let's let's put it this way, this was not in the original game. But the original game came out at a point in time where nothing of Bobarat was actually uh, known and years after that um, an entire campaign came out that lasted for years so real time years and it was all around this guy and uh, so I think they brought this in By turning us into undead, of course. Yes. Uh, yes, I will, I will do this. So Prius is uh, the lord of uh, law and goodness, and uh, he is completely anti-magic, and he will probably, they will try to burn these guys. Whatever, I will just sleep for a couple more hours. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Let's get the hell out here. And... Um, let's check into our equipment. I got 9... 15... 22... 29... 37... 44, 44 ducats. I will uh, get some lockpicks. I will need them. I will get them here. What? From 7? It's not 7 already? Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Uh, maybe the marketplace is already open? Yes, there are some people. Let's see what I can buy here. 
There are no lock picks here. Um, hello. I think I got I got a bug here. I can't move. That's not good. Ah. Let's see if I can sell something like this stuff. I will keep this axe as um, I don't need this. It is, it is nice, but it simply has no use. And I don't use this anymore. And I can sell these, which will give me six silver. Let's haggle full, half, and we got nothing. I'm not happy. I can't leave this place. And I can't open the map. I actually can open the map here, but I can't turn around and anything. Um, <laughs> so I've been recording for nearly an hour now. I think it's it's time to make a break anyway. Uh, I will I will use this and I uh, see you in the next video. Bye.